Hey guys, this is Heather. Today we're gonna make some raspberry cheesecake squares, which I'm really excited to try because they sound absolutely delicious. They are from my dear friend Tess Chalice's new book, The Vegan Mediterranean Cookbook, which is full of recipes that are inspired by the Mediterranean diet and the lifestyle. So in this one, she says that while cheesecake isn't really a Mediterranean dessert, it's using the ingredients that are part of the Mediterranean diet. And one thing I think is really cool is the base is made of pistachios. So anyway, let's start making these squares because I can't wait to try them. So we're gonna start with the crust, which is based on pistachios. And you either wanna buy the shelled kind or you have to take them all out of their shells, which can sometimes wind up with thumb injuries as me, so take my warning and buy the shelled ones. <laughs> These were the only ones that I could find that were unsalted and unroasted. Um, actually, I think these are roasted but not salted, so ideally you wanna get that. If you can't find unsalted, I'm sure it would taste lovely to have a little bit of salt in the crust anyway. You want an eight by eight dish to press this into, and then you want some kind of food processor. Now, I just have the mini one, so this is the attachment that goes on the bottom of my Cuisinart Smart Stick. So I'm gonna actually do this in two batches. I'm using medjool dates, so you wanna take, if they have a stem on them, off, and you wanna take the pit out. The regular dates that you buy that are like baking dates aren't usually soft and sticky enough to make a good base for a, like a pie crust or a cheesecake crust like what we're making here, but you can soak them. So if you buy baking dates, you could soak them in water to soften them up and um, hopefully they will blend up. Probably helps as well if you have a really good food processor that will crush it up. Like this one probably wouldn't handle baking dates very well. So I've got half a cup here and I'm just gonna put half of these in with my half the pistachios. And we've got a pinch of salt in here. So there you go, if you got salted pistachios, they'd probably be fine and you could just leave out that um, pinch of salt. So lock that on there and let's see how this goes. And if you're thinking to yourself, I don't know if this is working, just keep going. What we're waiting for is for the dates to be chopped up enough that they get sticky and hold the pistachios together. So even when I put my fingers in here and pinch this, it, it's sticking together. So it might look crumbly and chunky, but it's, it's getting there. So I just need a little bit more. And let's see where we're at. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is just dump this into a baking dish. And then I'm gonna do the other half. So there's our full mixture and it might look kind of crumbly, but don't worry because when you press it, so just spread it out here, and then when you press it down, it really sticks together. And we're also gonna be layering the cashew cheesecake filling on top of this, so some of the moisture will come down. But if you do want, if you feel like that's not sticky enough for you, you could add another couple dates, you could add a little drizzle of maple syrup, um, but that looks perfect. And I did have a note from Tess that you can use another nut or seed as the base. Like you could use walnuts or um, macadamia nuts or something. She did pistachios to do the Mediterranean feel. And um, I tried a little bit, it tastes amazing. But if you don't wanna bother with pistachios, feel free to swap out the nut. Okay, on to the filling, which I'm doing in a magic bullet because we've just got apartment size appliances here. Um, and hopefully they will be enough to pulverize these cashews, which have been soaking in some water. So I'm gonna drain that water off because it looks kind of funky. And then again, I'm gonna do this in batches because I can't overload my bullet. I've got some maple syrup instead of the agave because I'm Canadian, I love my maple syrup. It'll add a little bit of flavor, more than the agave, but I am totally okay with that. We're gonna do some freshly squeezed lemon juice, a little bit of salt, and I totally forgot to pick up vanilla extract, so that'll be good with my maple syrup. We'll kind of 
take over for that. Um, but don't you forget about the vanilla because I'm sure it is spectacular. It's supposed to be an eighth of a teaspoon total nutmeg, so I'm just going to put a pinch in each batch I'm doing here. And then we're going to puree this. The cool thing about using the magic bullet is that it's good with stuff that's thick when you don't have a lot of liquid. And if you feel like stuff's getting stuck, just shake it. I am going to transfer this now to a bowl so that I can mix the two halves together before I put them on the um, crust. By the way, a much better strategy on your lemons is to squeeze them into a measuring cup so then you can make sure you get the seeds out and um, then you can measure the actual liquid. The recipe calls for half a cup of lemon juice and for me that was one and a half lemons but lemons are going to be different sizes so you probably want to measure it to make sure you get that liquid ratio correct. Oh and I totally missed this in the first round but you need a quarter cup of neutral flavored oil for the total batch so mine is all going to go in this one so I might have to scoop some of that back in to blend it all together. So the second batch is a little too runny to be cheesecake, so let's put some of the first batch back in there. Oh, let's just do it all. Now that the cashews are blended up, it all fits in here. It's just that if you overload your blender, no matter what kind of blender it is, if you overload your blender, it won't get the, get the cashews soft enough. All right, so we've got this all blended together now. We can take a taste. Yum! That is so good. And then we're just gonna pour it out here. Get all of that in here, every last drop. I really love the nutmeg in here. And then just smooth it out over your base and lick your spoon. Now all that's left to do is top this baby and I've got some fresh raspberries ready to go. But what I'm also going to do, because Tess suggested a raspberry jam, is I've got some frozen raspberries, a little bit of water, some chia seeds, a little drizzle of maple syrup, because why not? And then I'm going to puree that into a jam. Voila! Magical. So Tess says to artfully swirl this around. I don't know how artful I'm going to get, but let's, let's try. It's not bad. Sometimes I impress even myself. Now very important, she says to put the raspberries open side down. And I don't know if you want to press them in a little bit or you can just leave them sitting on top. Entirely up to you. This is the prettiest thing I've made in a really long time. <laughs> Thank you Tess for the inspiration and the recipe. All that's left to do is put this in the fridge for one or two hours until the filling sets. So I hope you guys enjoy that recipe. You'll find a printable version down below. You can also check out Tess's book, The Vegan Mediterranean Cookbook. It's full of amazing recipes. I had such a hard time picking just one to share with you. And I'm super excited to say that one of you lucky people with a US mailing address will win a copy. There's details on how to enter down below as well. All right, thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Tess, for sharing this delicious recipe with us. And we will talk soon. Bye, guys. What do you think, boys? Very good. Yeah? How do you like the... No fig, just raspberries. Really? Oh, there's um, dates in the bottom. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, and ca cashews, right? Cashews. And pistachios. Do you guys like pistachios? Yeah. Yeah? yeah?